How much of the world's wealth is controlled by the top 1%? Take a guess. 20%? 30%? Not even close. 43% of the wealth is in the hands of the top 1%. Just imagine for a moment that 1% of the population controls half of the wealth in the country. In fact, the bottom half controls almost nothing. Wealth inequality is of course a problem, but that's not what this video is about. What we want to find out is, how do you join the ranks of the top 1%? Maybe you're going to use that wealth to change the system. Maybe the system needs someone honest, loyal and pious like you to finally make money and change everything for good. Most people take the traditional way of building wealth. They improve their skills, work harder, discipline themselves to make sure to get a raise. However, the unavoidable truth is that no one gets rich by working for money. I know that it sounds controversial because we've always been taught that time is money, but the reality is that there is a limit to how much wealth you can create if you trade your time for money. The average hourly earnings of all employees in the United States is a little over $11. But let's say you are above the average, you have a college degree plus some experience. So you're paid $50 per hour, assuming you work 10 hours a day 5 times a week. That's $130,000 a year. Not bad. But after we deduct your basic expenses such as taxes, shelter, food and transport, you're probably going to be left with a much smaller amount. But let's be optimistic. Let's say you are going to work harder and become the best lawyer in New York City, charging $300 an hour. If you can charge 300 bucks per hour, you are a big deal. Not many people can charge that much. But even with that kind of hourly rate, you're going to make around $780,000 a year pre-taxes and pre-expenses. That's a lot of money. It can provide you with a pretty luxurious life no matter where you are, even in New York City. But that's not even a million dollars. So how do people make hundreds of millions of dollars, or in some cases, billions without being able to charge 300 bucks per hour? Take Buffett for example. In 2018, Warren Buffett earned $3.8 billion in dividends. Don't get me wrong, he did not sell his shares, but rather the companies he has invested in paid him that much money. And that's what passive income is. It's when you buy or build an asset that earns money without your interference. Of course, a certain level of management is required, but in general, your money works to make more money. There are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to passive income, and it's heavily overused on the internet, but if you learn to do it right, it can do wonders. It's the only way out of the paycheck to paycheck lifestyle. What I want to point out is, it's not easy, it is going to take you a lot of time and effort to build your first source of income, but once you have it, you can use that income to build a second one that is more passive, that requires a lot less management from you. So here in this video, we're going to take a look at 15 passive income sources. I have tried most of them, I have turned multiple of them into real passive income for myself. They do work, so pay attention because it is going to be a long video, but nonetheless really helpful. If you're ready, give this video a thumbs up and let's start with the first one. Print on demand store. At first glance, it doesn't sound like passive income, but it's one of the easiest ways to create a real passive income. Let me tell you in short how it works. Back in the days, in order to start selling clothes, you needed a huge capital to hire designers, a manufacturer to manufacture your hoodies, shorts and t-shirts. You had to build a proper business to do that, which was not easy. On top of that, there was a huge risk because if people won't like your designs, you would have lost everything. That's why we only had huge retailers. But that has changed in the last 5-10 to 10 years. Print-on-demand companies such as Teespring have created supply chains that give the ability to anyone to open his or her store. They have in-house manufacturers, a website that allows anyone to create a store for themselves, and a delivery system to get the merch almost anywhere in the world. All you have to do is to come up with a design and sell it. Of course, they're going to get their cut, but it's absolutely worth it since they're going to do all the hard work and your job is to only design and advertise. 
Some people literally spend countless hours on Pinterest to find eye-catching designs, adjust them a little bit and put them on a t-shirt. If no one is going to buy that design, it is not a big deal because you're not going to lose any money on that. Try another design and see what happens. Once you find out what people really like, create Facebook ads to keep promoting that design. Congrats, you've successfully created a passive income source. Number 2. Online Courses This is probably one of the best inventions in recent history. I get it, a lot of people hate online courses because of people like Ty Lopez or Dan Locke have misused this tool to scam people by selling them worthless courses for astronomical prices. I mean, paying $2,000 for a course that will tell you work hard, find your purpose, build connections isn't really helpful. I mean, these lessons are taught in any basic self-improvement book. In fact, any of these self-improvements, like the 7 habits of highly effective people, would teach you much more than these courses could possibly do. However, it doesn't mean all courses are bad. For example, when I started my journey on YouTube, I knew nothing about this industry. I was in the stock market and real estate and had no idea how the media works. But I thought, as long as I create valuable content, people are going to watch them. However, it turns out that it doesn't work like that. Creating great content is just part of the job. Understanding media is a whole different thing. That's why it took me a really long time to build my channel. Now it's growing way better, but in the first year, it did extremely poorly. If I knew what I know today, I'm certain that I have grown my channel 3 times faster at least. I wish there was someone who went through all of this and made every possible mistake and told me, listen, this is how it works. I would gladly pay a few hundred dollars to buy that course because it would have saved me a lot of time and money that I have spent elsewhere to make all of these mistakes by myself. So if you're good at anything, it doesn't matter what it is. Stocks, YouTube, real estate, music, art, sports. Turn your knowledge and skills into an online course. It is not as difficult as you might think. Yes, of course, it takes some time, but it's not a full-time job. Unlike traditional courses where you have to teach people by spending time with them, with online courses you can create the course once and you can sell it unlimited times. With every extra course that you sell, you don't have to record it again, you don't have to spend any time or money to create it. It is as simple as copying and pasting. But you may say, I need a website where I can sell my course, an online payment system that takes resources to create. Fortunately, I have some good news for you, my friend. In the last 5 to 10 years, a lot of platforms have been created that simplifies this process. For example, there is Skillshare that works on a subscription-based model. You don't directly sell your course to anyone, but if people choose to watch your course on the platform, you're going to be paid based on the numbers of minutes your course is watched. Courses often are short, simple, and straightforward, like the course we have created on the stock market that teaches how to analyze companies to find great investments. It doesn't matter whether you're a beginner or a professional investor, anyone can benefit from this course. You can check it out using the link in the description or create your own course on Skillshare. But that's just one of many platforms. There is also Teachable, where you can sell your course for a fixed fee. The platform will provide you with everything, starting from the tools you need to build your front page to a payment system to a place where your students can watch your course. Number 3. Put ads on your car It sounds like a joke, but there is actually a way to make money by putting ads on your car. It is so weird that there is so many ways you can make money through ads today. What an age are we living in? Think about it. You drive your car anyways. You might drive every morning to your office, drop your kids at school, or just hit the hypermarket to do your groceries. Why not let your car generate some income while you're doing that? I know that putting ads on your car seems like too much, you might feel a bit too uncomfortable, but who cares, you're earning money, and in case if you get tired of that, you can get rid of it whenever you want. You can expect to earn anything from $100 to $500 per month, especially if you have a car loan, it is going to pay for your car. But be careful, because there are a lot of scammers in this industry. It is going to take you some time to find a proper company that is willing to put ads on your car, but then you can forget about it while you will get a few hundred dollars every single month for just driving your car. Number 4. Stocks 
when you think of stocks, you don't necessarily think of passive income. Yes, you can make money by investing in the stock market, but that's usually by investing in companies that often grow over time for one reason or another. However, it is just one out of many ways investors use to earn fortunes through the stock market. We can cover all of the methods because it's going to take us forever to talk about shorting to options to other financial instruments. But what fits the best passive income description is dividend investing. What people don't realize often is that when you buy a certain stock, you automatically become as one of the owners of that company. And the purpose of any business is to make money for its shareholders. When you open a local grocery store on the corner of the street, you don't do that to please the neighborhood. You do it because there is an opportunity to make money, selling groceries to people who live in that area. One of the ways to spend that money you earn out of that business is to invest it back into the business to expand and maximize your income. It could be by expanding your existing store or opening a second store in the neighboring street. But eventually, the goal is to be able to spend that money on yourself. When you buy stocks, that's the perspective you have to keep in mind. You're not randomly buying gambling tickets, but ownership in real companies or selling real products or services. And once they earn a profit, they're obligated to share that profit with you even if you hold a single stock. That is known as a dividend. When you research any stock, you will often come across a dividend ratio. That's how much dividends the company pays in relation to its stock price. The higher, the better. It's often a few percent. Tech companies pay a small dividend or zero in some cases because they prefer to invest that back into the company since the competition between tech companies is really tough. However, traditional companies that are more established do consistently pay dividends to their shareholders, such as Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson, or Apple. These companies already have a proven business model. They are sitting on a pile of cash and don't necessarily have to invest that money back into the company since any additional investment would not make any real profit. Dividend investing is probably one of the best forms of passive income since you really don't do anything. In fact, you don't even have to look for these companies. There is a list of companies that are known as the king of dividends. The link to these companies will be in the description. Number 5. Crypto Lending When you think about lending money, you imagine banks that take money from people who have extra money and lend it to the people who need it. Of course, it is not done through the goodness of their hearts. People who keep their money in the bank are paid a small interest, and the people who borrow money are also charged an interest, but often a much higher rate. The bank is simply intermediary in this equation and pockets the difference. Of course, this is merely a simple explanation of how the banks work. There is definitely much more to it, but that's not the point. As crypto is becoming more and more popular, more and more companies are accepting Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as a form of payment. It all started with Elon Musk announcing that it is going to accept Bitcoin for Tesla payments, although he later said that Tesla will no longer accept Bitcoin due to environmental impact. Other companies followed his lead, such as PayPal and others. The number of people who are using crypto is growing exponentially. So naturally, we have crypto banks. They don't usually call themselves banks because the very concept of crypto was to help us get rid of the banks in the first place, but they perform the exact same role. If you're a crypto investor, instead of just holding your bitcoins or ethereum in your wallet, you can lend it to people who need it and receive interest. The interest on crypto is way higher than you can possibly get on any savings account. It could easily go up to 10%. And that's largely because crypto is risky. If you haven't been living under the rock, you probably have come across the news that over $600 million worth of Ethereum was stolen. And that's not a single case. The crypto world since the beginning has been fueled by hacks and leaks. On top of that, if you take into account the fact that the price of cryptocurrencies isn't really stable, today they could be trading at all-time high, tomorrow it could be down by 50%. That is why rates are so high. It is not what I would personally recommend. However, if you are a dedicated crypto investor, it's one of the ways you should consider. I would probably go with a lower rate, but a safe one rather than a higher rate but there is also a significant risk of losing your entire investment. Number 6. 
real estate. You cannot talk about passive income without talking about real estate. Real estate is the oldest and the ultimate source of passive income. When we talk about real estate, we don't just mean family houses, but rather all kinds of real estate that includes commercial real estate, land and so on. Even Bill Gates, once not that long ago richest person in the world, is now America's biggest owner of farmland. That's also real estate. What sets real estate apart from other kinds of assets is that you can touch it, feel it, and there is almost a demand for it always. Humans naturally need shelter, especially today since we're so used to living in huge cities. On top of that, judging by the data, property prices often rise in value, at least slightly to keep up with inflation. So you're not only getting a constant stream of income from your tenant, but also holding the value of your asset. Of course, property prices can also fall as we have seen in 2008, but that's an exception. In fact, if you understand the market and want to buy when prices are hitting all-time high like they do now, you should be fine. The problem with real estate is that it's often expensive. You probably heard the phrase, your house is your biggest investment. That is true in many ways. It takes a lifetime to buy a house. That's why we have 30-year-old mortgages. What I also like about real estate is that your mortgage payments can be deducted from your income, which can also help you lower your tax bill. That is also a form of passive income. Yes, that money you're supposed to give to the government goes back into your pocket. Number 7. YouTube videos When YouTube just was launched, no one expected it to grow this much. I remember watching YouTube back in 2009, over 10 years ago. The quality of the videos were creepy and there wasn't enough valuable content. Very few people did put the effort to create valuable content. But that has changed. It's the world's leading video platform. It is the first place that people visit if they want to watch a video. And those who got early into the game have made a fortune, especially those who created DIY videos. Let's say I create a video that teaches people how to cook eggs. Nothing is complicated about that, but there are always people who don't know how to cook an egg, like I did a few years ago. So what do you do? You Google how to cook an egg. Of course, you can read an entire article, but it's way more comfortable to watch a video that will show you everything. And before watching any of your videos, people are going to come across ads, and YouTube is going to share that revenue with you. Of course, getting one or two views isn't going to earn you a fortune. In fact, even a thousand views aren't going to get you anything. However, let's imagine if you have a hundred or two hundred videos on your channel that teaches how to cook different dishes. And in total, they could be getting dozens of thousands of views every single day, even if you stop uploading, because people will always Google how to cook eggs or a salmon or an oatmeal. Number 8. Articles I'm not a big fan of articles, but when I found out that articles earn way more money than YouTube videos, I was shocked. I mean, who read blog posts? People prefer to watch videos. But the overwhelming majority of the content on the internet are blog posts because they're much easier to produce compared to the videos. On top of that, whenever you read a blog, you come across multiple ads. First of all, there is an ad on the top of the screen, two ads on both of the article, and as you keep reading the article, there are ads in between of the paragraphs. In fact, what makes them so unique is that they don't often disturb you, so you could be reading the article without getting rid of those ads. Compare that to a YouTube video. You have to skip the ad before the video since you can't be watching both at the same time. Even the ads that appear on the bottom of the screen are disturbing. To create a solid passive income with articles, you need to write enough articles that are optimized for search engines. So when people search for that thing, the first thing that appears on their screen is your article. Google handles 3.8 million searches per minute on average across the globe. That comes out to be 228 million searches per hour, 5.6 billion searches per day, or 2 trillion searches per year. That is a lot of searches. That means there is always a demand for almost anything. Any article can be monetized. And that takes me to the next point, affiliate marketing. If your blog post is about fitness, for example, because you're trying to lose weight and build some muscles, in your blog, you might recommend some protein shakes or apps that would help you to track your calories or help you exercise more effectively. 
Pretty much every service has an affiliate program, which means you will get paid anything from 1% to 10% or even 20% if someone uses your link to buy that product. If someone would read your blog and would get value out of it, they would definitely use your link to buy that product since you have established trust with them. Every time I talk about books, for example, I make sure to put an affiliate link in the description. So those of you who are interested in buying that book, you can do that using my link and we get a small commission that will help us grow the channel. You're not going to overpay that company or in this case Amazon would share with us a tiny percentage out of that sell for driving the traffic to their store. Of course, with one or two links, you aren't going to go far. But imagine if you have dozens of articles and dozens of links. You might drive hundreds if not thousands of people and that small commission will turn into a decent amount of money over a month. Number 10. Vending machines. When we talk about passive income, we never mention vending machines because they don't sound as exciting as real estate, for example. But if you think about it, it is that kind of an asset that provides a constant stream of income and requires minimum efforts if you automate it. There were 5 million vending machines in the US in 2015. These 5 million vending machines produce an average of $20 billion in sales each year. But most vending machines earn around $5 a week because it is not an easy business like any other business. If your property, for example, is placed in a bad neighborhood, it will probably turn into a liability. But a well-placed vending machine can earn far more than that, potentially exceeding $100 per week or hundreds of dollars a day. The challenge is to pick the right place and sell the right products. If you place it somewhere where there aren't many people, it is going to be one of those machines that earn $5 a week. But if it's in a highly visible location where it will regularly attract buyers, that's when you can expect a few hundred dollars from it every week. It requires a lot of hard work in the beginning, but minimum management later. Isn't that the meaning of passive income? Before getting into this space, I highly recommend everyone to study it further because you have to understand what kind of products sells the best, what vending machines turn the highest profit, and what type of locations attract more buyers. Number 11. Government Bones This is probably the easiest and the safest source of passive income. It doesn't require any skill or even effort. You're basically going to loan your money to the government and in return the government is going to pay you interest for that. The government is going to take your money and spend it on the infrastructure or schools and so on to improve the productivity of the citizens and in return their income would rise and they will pay more taxes which the government is going to use to pay you back. But you don't have to wait for the government to pay you back. You can simply sell it in the secondary market. Government bonds vary from 3 months to 30 years. The longer the period is, the higher the interest. 10 year old bonds, which are the most popular ones, have a yield of 125% now, which is not that high. But you have to understand that interest rates are extremely low now, so do government bonds. When the Fed is going to raise the rates, bond rates will rise as well. It might not be the best option now, but it will be in the coming future, because sooner or later interest rates will be raised. At least it's a much better option than keeping your money in a bank that doesn't even pay a 1% interest. But on the other side, it is a safe investment. What are the chances that the US government will go bankrupt? Pretty low if not zero since the US government is the source of the US dollar. So if you want a safe passive income that doesn't require any effort, then government bonds are your ideal option. Number 12. Become a silent partner. When we talk about starting a business, we usually mean starting a huge business, but there are plenty of small businesses that could be very profitable such as a corner shop or a barber shop. Of course, running a corner shop is a full-time job, but it could be turned into a passive income if you join the business as a silent partner. In business, there is a concept called silent partner, where you don't deal with the day-to-day -day management of the business, but rather play more of an advisory role. These types of businesses do not need a huge capital and their business model is pretty simple. You don't have to be a genius to find out how to start a profitable corner shop. 
just take a look at what others have done. You might go 50-50 with someone else who's going to run the business on a day-to-day basis and will get a fixed salary for it, but you're going to have a constant stream of income. But it's important to make sure that your numbers work on paper at least before starting anything in this field, because it's an investment eventually. Writes an ebook. Remember the example of the courses we have talked about earlier? Well, there is another way to monetize that knowledge. Recording a course is a lot harder than writing a short ebook. With the rise of Kindle and iPads, the demand for ebooks have risen dramatically. Of course, writing a book is not easy, it takes a lot of hard work. But nowadays, people are looking for a short, easy to read book that will teach them a specific skill. These books are often sold for $0.99 or $1.99. Of course, $2 is nothing, but when you get your ebook to the front page of Amazon and a few hundred of them is sold per month, that's almost $1,000 of passive income a month. In fact, once you figure out how Amazon algorithm works, you can write more books on other subjects and create more sources of passive income. I have never used this method, but I have friends who make a lot of money selling ebooks on Amazon. Number 14. Royalties. In 1999, Jeff Bezos filed a patent for a method ordering items online. It is called one-click buying. It's a technique that allows the customers to make a purchase with the payment information that they have used previously and saved. In other words, instead of manually inputting billing and shipping information for a purchase every single time, a user can use a one-click buying by using a predefined address and a credit card number to purchase the item. When you buy an app from the Apple Store, you don't re-enter your credit card information, you simply double-click on the side button and the software will automatically use your saved credit card. And until 2017, Apple and every other company that used this technique paid a small royalty to Jeff Bezos for using this innovation. It might sound silly to you, but that's how the world works. In order to encourage innovation, Governments have set out a system of patents. Since you have worked so hard to innovate a new product or a service, you will be granted an exclusive 20-year patent where no one is legally allowed to use it except you or the people you have given permission. Of course, you can use your innovation to profit from it directly or you can license it to others for a small commission fee every time they use it and potentially earn billions as Jeff Bezos did. It is probably one of the best passive income ideas ever. However, building a useful technology isn't that easy. That's why companies, especially in the US, file for thousands of patents every year, even if they don't need it since if someone else uses that technology, they will have to pay them a royalty. And finally, license your pictures. This is probably one of the most creative and easiest ways to create passive income. In fact, as long as you have a smartphone, you can use this method. Of course, it is not going to earn you millions of dollars or six figures, but if you're starting out and you don't have many options, you can give it a try. Most content creators depend on services like Shutterstock or Storyblocks for footage to create videos, exactly like this video. We don't have the resources to shoot everything on our own, so we depend on them. But where do they all get this footage? From people like you. You can upload your pictures or videos and each time someone downloads your picture, you're going to get paid a small commission. Of course, with a single picture, you aren't going to earn much. But again, if you upload enough pictures or videos, they could turn into a substantial amount. What makes this source so passive is that even if you stop one day, as long as there is demand for your footage, you will continue to get paid. It is not as easy as it sounds, you have to put the effort to shoot desirable pictures or videos. But if you don't have any other option and you enjoy photography, maybe this is exactly where you should start. The topic of passive income never stops. In the age of internet, there are endless of possibilities. Some people have taken it so seriously that they have built a multi-billion dollar company and then handed the management to someone else while enjoying the income they earn from that company. But of course, if you're watching this video, you're probably looking to start small. You gotta start somewhere. I have tried almost all of these methods that we have discussed in this video. They're not easy. They take time, but they work. Anything real takes time. The idea of creating passive income overnight is a fantasy that get-rich-quick schemes want to sell you. So manage your expectations and be real. Don't try them all at once. Focus only on one of them. 
Once you master it, then you can move to create your second source of income, and so on. If you have enjoyed this video, you will most definitely enjoy this custom playlist that I have created specifically for you that has our most popular videos on business, investing, and the stock market that could potentially change your life. And now, give this video a thumbs up that it deserves, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Thanks for watching, and until next time.